Sequencing research um, is happening on a large scale around the world. And so researchers have access to millions of sequences that belong to a research participant. So there's an awful lot of potential health-related data that's in there, that's contained in labs, um, is contained across the world. And particularly over the last five years, there's been a lot written in the medical, social sciences and ethics literature about this duty that researchers may have to research participants to be actively looking for particular pieces of health-related data and sharing that. Now, that duty may exist or it may not. I mean, that's open for debate. But what hadn't really happened was large-scale um, attitude work to really ask people, do you even want this data? Do you think it should, should be shared? Which is why we set up um, the Genome Ethics Project and why I designed the survey to try and gather that data. The survey went viral and it was completed by members of the public, genetic health professionals, other health professionals and genomic researchers all across the world. And what we did in the survey is ask people to imagine if they were a research participant taking part in a sequencing research project what information would they like to receive? And what we found across the board was that people want genomic data. They find it inspiring, they're interested in it. And um, we said, would you be interested in knowing about genes related to conditions that are life-threatening or serious, but treatable? Would you want to know that sort of data? And 98% of people across the board said, yes, we'd want that data. We moved through different categories of information. So we said, would you want to know about how you respond to medications? Would you want to know if you're a carrier of a condition that you could pass on to children? Would you want to know uncertain data? Would you want to know raw sequence data? And as we moved through those categories, as they became less serious or less useful, the interest in receiving information started to decline. But Still, even uncertain data and raw sequence data, people said, yeah, I'd really quite like to have that information. People were saying, you know, it's about me, it's very personal, if you know it, I'd like to know it. But they were also able to say, OK, but I don't expect you to deliver that information to me if that means that your research is compromised. So people recognised that if researchers had to take time and effort and resources away from answering their research question in order to provide this information to research participants, they didn't expect researchers to do that. Translating the findings of this research into a clinical setting um, is possible in that we know that people want data. So one might assume that in a clinical setting they will also want data. So again, we need to be thinking about very clear delivery of information. People need to know very um, early on what they can sign up for, what they can have access to and what not. They need to be able to opt out of receiving data as well. They need to be able to choose what data they have access to. But also they need to be given support and help to understand, interpret, translate this information, not only for themselves but also for their family. So in the past, there was perhaps more of a distance between the researcher and the research participant, where the researcher would take a sample from the research participant, do their research, publish their findings, and the research participant may never be connected to those results. Whereas what I found through my study is that people want to be connected to their genomic data. They want to be involved more in the process. They're interested in individual results for themselves. And so I think that's a real message for researchers to be more connected, to think about this as a collaborative engagement with research participants, to think about their needs, to address those needs to some degree, um, and to be all in this together to improve human health.